The first artwork located at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, Netherlands, was painted by Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh, born in the Netherlands in 1853 to a Protestant family, was known for his post-impressionist paintings, which were painted at a high rate while being treated at a mental hospital. Van Gogh was able to express his feelings and emotions through his paintings. These paintings seem to be a product of his mental breakdowns that were caused by his mental illness. The painting shown, titled The Raising of Lazarus, was created by Van Gogh in 1890 while he was at the St. Remy Mental Hospital. The artwork is a recreation of an original etching artwork with the same title, created by artist Rembrandt, shown to the left, also located in Amsterdam. The original artwork by Rembrandt, created in 1642 during the Baroque era, depicts a famous instance where Jesus brings Lazarus of Bethany from the dead. Van Gogh's recreation of this etching artwork is filled with post-impressionist influences, such as it doesn't follow the cultural norms that were once introduced in the Baroque era. It is evident that Van Gogh was influenced by Rembrandt. They were both born in the Netherlands, meaning they probably shared similar cultural beliefs. Although Van Gogh's artwork was created about 250 years after Rembrandt's and Van Gogh was in a mental hospital, Van Gogh still managed to honor the original etching. I believe that Van Gogh's artwork is culturally significant because it proves that artists are always influenced by other artists. We must understand that most of the time, art we see today is not original, but a sequel to existing art. Most of the modern art we see today, such as movies, commercials, and music, are most likely that they were influenced by preceding art from past years. Van Gogh's The Raising of Lazarus can support this statement. As for elements within the painting, the lines are thick, expressive brushstrokes, which correlate to Van Gogh's expressive style of painting and a direct expression of his feelings. The colors within this painting are rich and vibrant to the right side, where the two individuals and the sun represent life. The left side of the painting has colors that are dark and dull, which represent death and suffering that Lazarus and Van Gogh were both experiencing. As for space, the left side seems to be filled with a cave that, while while the right side is open and free. Here Van Gogh is portraying that he is trapped and cannot wait any longer to be freed from the suffering. Van Gogh was able to translate his feelings and emotions into his artwork. Jesus is no longer existent, but rather replaced by the sun. Van Gogh seemed to have placed himself in Lazarus' spot, where Van Gogh is now the individual who must be resurrected. I think this represents himself wanting to be resurrected by a higher spirit like Jesus, in this case the sun. This painting was created while he was suffering the most at the mental hospital. I think Van Gogh was expressing that he wanted to be himself again. I believe he was waiting for something to uplift him and make all his suffering go away. The second artwork, which was once exhibited at the Carmel Art Association Gallery, but is now privately owned, was painted by Euphemia Charts and Fortune. Euphemia Fortune, born in 1985, came of age during a time when women began to redefine their roles in society, pushing the boundaries of what was expected of them and challenging the status quo. One would imagine that her paintings done in the early 20th century would have modernist influences, but she considered herself to be an impressionist and later took on a post-impressionist approach. Born in Sausalito, California, she moved to Europe and lived in countries such as England, France, Italy, and Scotland, where she continued to work on her art. Finally, returning to California in 1928, she joined the Carmel Art Association, where she held art exhibitions. The painting shown titled Edinburgh Castle was created by Euphemia Fortune in 1929, while she was a member of the Carmel Art Association in California. While living in Europe, Euphemia had the opportunity to paint scenes with an impressionist approach. She continued to paint European scenes after a return to California. This painting is an example of Euphemia Fortune's transition to post-impressionism. Rejecting interest in depicting the observed world, they, post-impressionists, instead look to their memories and emotions in order to connect with the viewer on a deeper level. Euphemia Fortune was able to paint the Scottish Edinburgh Castle from her memory while in California. Instead of focusing on form, she focused on expression and was able to translate her emotions onto the painting perhaps the feelings that she experienced while visiting the Edinburgh Castle. In the early 1900s, women were still experiencing suffrage. It wasn't until 1920 that women got the right to vote, thanks to the 19th Amendment. Euphemia returned to the United States around the time when women were becoming powerful. Prior to the Great Depression of 1929, women had jobs that were considered important. Euphemia Fortune's job as an artist proved that women had a say in art. This artwork is culturally significant 
because it shows how women were able to contribute to society in the 1920s by having regular jobs. If women weren't ought to be important around this time, then this artwork would not have been taken seriously either, and Euphemia wouldn't have been a member of the Carmel Art Association. Similar to Van Gogh's painting, we see post-impressionist influences within this painting's elements. The lines consist of very thick brush strokes representing a pore of expression. The colors are vibrant and uplifting, correlating to the happiness that she probably experienced while visiting the Edinburgh Castle. Lastly, Euphemia depicts the castle as being distant and everything below the mountain's range as being near to her.